Here we go. A catchy little theme tune. <laughs> I, I like that. Scott. What is How that tune? How are you, Scott? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. And you? Fine, fine. You look like you're getting some records sorted out. Ah, uh, yes. I got a stack of stuff to show tonight. Yeah, we're a little thin tonight. Uh, um, uh, I think Jack's back, which would be nice. But uh, Carl is um, Carl is in the, in the jungle. I think he's he's reliving that film. What was it? Uh, out of the movie, the book, Out of Darkness. <laughs> Colonel oh, Kurtz. Vince Geraldo. <laughs> <laughs> it's no Colonel Colonel. Yeah, Colonel Kurtz. So he's in the jungle of uh, the jungles of of, of Indonesia, and um, so he'll be. But he'll be back next week. He sends his regards to everybody, and uh, we're getting a few people here straight away. Let's let's put some some comments before we start. Straight talk with Jack Graham. Hi, Anthony here, and Beat just got back from Arkansas to photograph the eclipse. I, I, I got to figure out what's so fascinating about that stupid eclipse. I mean, the world went nuts. I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something. It was epic. Well, <laughs> you know, hear all about it. Finally, home after 16 days. And even Flaming Groove said, Welcome back, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, SSPE, I think you're new here. I haven't recognized your, your handle. Welcome. It's great to see you. Thank you for coming. What do you think of Harmonia Mundi? What I love them. I have like a handful, not a lot, but I have the ones that are well-regarded audiophile ones, uh, titles like the Folia and uh, the Dances of Hungary. And all, it's all kinds of interesting music on that label. So, so fascinating. And the recordings are so good. I, I, I like it a lot. You talking about vinyl? Yes. I, I've never seen any of the vinyl. I've, I've heard and reviewed lots of their compact discs, discs which I think are wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. And uh, they have nice water music. Oh, they do, eh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cranberry sauce. We know who that is, don't we? Alan. 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 Right. Alan. Is it A L U N or A L A N? I think I, I wrote A L A N in the comments today. Um, and uh, Alan said, "Enjoyed first last song's video." Alan from Scott is from the Granite State. Yes, he is from New Hampshire. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. It was a lot of fun putting that um, that um, that video together. It was took a long time, but it was wonderful. And the recordings there were so many, and the um, the the comments from the team uh, from Charles. Charles was a funny one. <laughs> the bowel movement com comment that was from Charles. Uh, but uh, Jim's coming up in a minute. He'll talk about his choices. And this your friend there, uh, or oh, our friend now? Yeah, Joey. Hi, Joey. He's and, made a regular uh, visit to us. Yes. Yeah. And just lovely comments on my chat on on my videos. Mm -hmm. Now this is something very special. Uh, my wife especially would like this. RCO one seven seven zero. I think you're new to the new to the uh, live stream. If you are, welcome. If not, welcome back. And a very important comment. Hello from Montreal. And <laughs> my wife. Woo! Montreal is my hometown. Uh, mm. Where. That's where um, uh, I I grew up, Montreal. I was born in England, but we emigrated to Canada in 1969. I was just a little guy, and uh, lived in Montreal. And you know, I just love it. Once you're in Montreal, that's it. It's there. Yeah. I, I lived in in Toronto for 28 years. Uh, we left Montreal, and uh, the playing and the conducting and the gigging and that was a little bit stronger in in in, in Toronto. But it's a fantastic, fantastic city. Except for a couple of months in the winter. Man, is that a winter? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it is ALA. And thank you, Alan. And uh, Jack will come up in a minute. And he said, evening, everyone. Um, so, yes. Uh, now, I've got a couple of things, a little bit of housekeeping. I'm going to watch my hands. Don't interrupt. Said little comments to myself. Don't talk too much or hog the conversation. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> What's that, Jen? <laughs> I know she's laughing. <laughs> a little bit of self-deprecation is good. And then I could welcome Scott. How are you? Because I always say, how are you? And my wife, my producer, gets very mad at me. It's how are you? So 
So mm -hmm. here, here's, here's the little bit of housekeeping. So if you can comment lots, we, we're a little thin tonight. Uh, as as I said, Carl's away. Um, and now Angie is in, in Axpona. So she's going to try and jump on from Axpona and let us know what's going on there. Mm -hmm. Please comment lots, lots of lots of questions. Uh, we love to answer the questions. And also don't forget to please like and subscribe. It really helps. And I'm going to put the, um, the, um, the link on and I'm going to do it now. Where are we here? Uh, no, that's not it. Invite. And by all means, you're very welcome to come on up. And now um, this is from RCO. So you will understand. Bonsoir de Montréal. You're right when you tell how much you are. But it is great. You go to the underground city and, you know, you got Kojaks for the with the heroes and you got uh, smoked meat. I mean, you know, it's heaven. We love it. We love Montreal. Um, and this is a, a very nice gentleman. Hi, Jose Luis Herrera Lepron from Arizona. First time on. Uh, Jose, I think, discovered the channel and has been doing all sorts of wonderful uh, comments on my, um, yes. on my videos. It's wonderful. So thank you. I and think this, he's, he's been on my channel too. I'm sure he has. And this yeah. is with Stephen. I Stephen, I think you're a new guy as well. It's wonderful to have so many new people tonight. Good evening from right. the late early UK. Uh huh. And I'm gonna Jack, I put you on in two seconds. I'm just putting on uh flaming group listens. I just picked up six of nine London. Why don't you read this one, Scott? Go ahead. I just picked up six of nine London FFRR Haydn Symphonies. Complete symphony box sets from the 70s, still sealed. Um, Five dollars for each by Antal Durati, Philharmonia, Hungary, Hungarica. Any comments on these recordings? Well, yeah, they're wonderful. the The orchestra is very good, not great. It's it, they play very well. Certainly, some lovely playing, but there are a bunch of expats. Hungarian expats who live in Vienna and they had an orchestra and it went for about 30 or 40 years, got funded, then got defunded and they, they broke up. But uh, there's a there's a whole thing about Dorati. And when Jim comes on tonight, we'll talk a bit more. Dorati's having his, his uh, Indian summer. He really is. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, um, buy them. They're great. And, of course, it's all the I had the symphonies. I mean, amazing. And hello from Bombay, India. Bombay Teddy. Hi, Bombay Teddy. I, I was talking to Bombay Teddy today on the comments on the Strauss video. And oh. it's just wonderful to hear from you from in Mumbai. From, uh, from, uh, from Bombay, Mumbai. Yeah, by that big arch. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, RCO1770 just, just finished listening to Francesca de Rimini with Philadelphia and Muti. Wow. I should also... Richard. Great, Richard. It's great to, great to have you on, Richard. What a pleasure. Yes. Here we go. Here we are. Here he is. The prodigal son returns. <laughs> Finally. Hi, Jack. Finally. What a trip. Two, three trips. Three, 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 locate, three, Sitka, Alaska, and Olympic National Park, and then a couple of days with the eclipse. It, it, you know, Anthony, it was, it was, it was great. I've never seen this before. And you know, we're trying to work a camera and watch this happen. It was it was just amazing. But, you know, we were in a place that we didn't have a lot of – we had nobody around us. We were on private land. So I didn't have people screaming and yelling, and it, it was nice. But it went fast. Did you, look, was, up, did you look up without any well, glasses? Like glasses. No, 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 no. That's <laughs> stupid. But what the hell it, is that? <laughs> eight, eight, eight and a half hours one way, so it was 16 hours driving. Really? But the good news is I'm here, and it's good to see you all. Oh, it's so Every good. Every time I see that head of hair on Jim, I God, <laughs> why do you have to put him next to me? I mean, that's <laughs> Jim. Oh, well. I don't know what you've got, Jack, but my wife, who is a, I think a very beautiful woman, and she keeps yes. saying she she says she says, "Where's Jack? He's a very charming man. I like Jack. Has Jack not been on for a couple of weeks? She was worried about you, Jack. Well, no, no, no." I go through these trips uh, yeah, periodically. Are you going to say I go through these women? Like <laughs> no, no, no. That's, uh, maybe, maybe a long time ago, you know. 
Mm-hmm. I tell people when you get to be my age, you know, hot soup gets me excited. <laughs> <laughs> Look, she's even laughing. She's even laughing at your jokes, Jack. <laughs> it's not a joke. That's the sad part. <laughs> James, how are you, my friend? My dear, dear friend, how are you? I'm good. Yes, I'm fine. I'm here in rainy, damp London, as usual. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I wish the weather would improve. I'm sick and tired of rain and damp. And But there mm. we go. What can you do? So no, how's no. everybody else? <laughs> Well, we've just been chatting. Jack's been away in the wilds of Alaska. He shot a grizzly bear. Can you believe that? No, he didn't. No, just, no, no, no. No, we didn't see any bears, but we saw a lot of whales and a lot of wildlife. My 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 clients are happy, and that's what the important part is. You know. What what were you doing what up there, Jack? Were you taking clients' I, photography? I, I took a group um, to Sitka, and we were out on a boat for three days looking for bubble. These whales bubble feed the humpbacks, oh. um, with the herring. So we were we were up eight hours a day on a boat. And, you know, it was. Uh, it, it, you know, so I've been doing this thirty years, and it's kind of what I do to get away. But I did bring some nice music with me, and you know, I have to tell you that on I think it was on Charles's recommendation, I did find it's a weird cover. I did find the oh you did way. I actually like this. Is is that weird? It's a famous record. But I, I actually a lot of people don't like this. Well, he he. I mean, Charles, I thought gave a really great account of it and why it's so good. Plus, Charles hears things in a very unique way, and it's worth listening to. And um, I was so intrigued by it because I worked with Frank Shipway, so did so did Jim. And he would come up with the the Rolex backwards, you know, like Carrie Ann and the, the yeah, yeah. around. But he was a good guy, and he was a good conductor, a pretty hard taskmaster. But I wanted to know about that recording specifically, so I got in touch with a flute player named Robert Wynn. I hope Robert, maybe Robert's watching. Robert Wynn was principal flute of the Royal Philharmonic, a wonderful flute player. When I was at Trinity, he was at um, the Royal Academy. And he didn't really, we didn't really know each other, but I was going out with a girl. <laughs> she was laughing, he knows. And she said, do you want to go see a flute player tonight? He's doing the Mozart second flute concerto. I said, sure. So we went up and it was Robert and he was wonderful. He's a virtuoso. He teaches a professor at the Cologne uh, Conservatory now and, and principal for, you know, for many years. And about two days later, we broke up. <laughs> In a really cantankerous, contentious, and she went, by the way, Robert wins a much better flute player than you are. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. What a way to break up. Anyway, so he said he actually wasn't on that gig, but it was a fellow named um, uh, Julian Coward who plays second usually. But he said um, it got a lot of a lot of praise when it came out. So what do you like about it, Jack? You know, it's just different. It, it, it's... You know, I, after listening to the, the talk, the talk we had. Can you hold that right up so we can everyone can see it? Yeah. Wow. I'm I'm the glare like, out of it. That's okay. That's fine. Okay. Cool. You know, when we discussed this with Charles a couple of weeks ago, I think was, that was when this came up. You know, I think we got in a little bit into his characteristics, what we were saying about the Von Karen, uh persona. And I was expecting it to be, you know, <laughs> just kind of a radically different interpretation. And I, I think it's very dramatic. I mean, his it's slower and in, in, in the, in, you know, but but it's I think it's, it's the, the sonic song here is really good. Was, the, record, the, the recording's welcome, really good. Welcome to the channel, I think. It's on, uh, if you can see that or not, it might be. It's on. Uh, Is it train? It, it's on, uh, what's here? I can't see it. I don't have a lot of light. But it's, you know, it doesn't say the label. I think it's Tring. It was the Royal Philharmonic did their own label. They did Shostakovich 10 with him. They did that one and a few other ones with him. 
Um, but anyway, Robert said they're very highly regarded. Charles absolutely loves it. I, I, it's great. I mean, you know, I thought, you know, Bernstein put a lot of um, drama into kind of building up drama and I think how he obviously did. But th this, I won't say it exceeded Bernstein, but in parts of it, it's just, it's just amazing. I, I mean, I, you know, the Daggiato, I mean, it's 12 minutes and 36 seconds. It's pretty long. I will but say, it's, isn't it wonderful? Glorious. Strings are glorious. When you get to talk to people and people like Charles, and then you, they do recommendations, and then you, you have people that you respect, you go, oh, I'll, I'll go to, and you get something, and you really enjoy it, and it opens up your mind. I, I love that. I love that about the show. I love that about YouTube. I love that well, about the magazine. I've never heard of this guy. Well, and, and I'm saying, okay, some guy named Ship, wait, come on. Frank, you yeah. know. It's Herbert von Karajan, Guido Cantelli, you know, Carlo Maria Giolini. They conduct his names. Yeah, Frank, I mean, he knocked it out of the box. Principal sells you a Buick, right? Is there anything else that he did that is worth looking for? Well, yes. And this is the thing about Frank. See, Frank burned a lot of bridges because yeah, of his yeah. personality. So he didn't play the game. Um, and uh, he didn't have the right name. He was a handsome fellow, tall, strapping man, um, and very fine conductor. So he went to Sao Paulo. He went to Italy. Right. Uh, they loved him in Italy because was it Jim? You were saying about Toscanini in Italy. Yeah, well, because he was a he was a bit of a martinet, and the Italians like that because they like being shouted at. You know, <laughs> 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 they, they they don't feel that they're doing the job right unless they're getting shouted at. <laughs> I mean, look at Mooty. I mean, you know. <laughs> well, yeah. I have to tell you, if you if anybody's listening. And and they're they're the least bit into Mahler. You have to have this in your. You have to have it. That's great. It's not. I know it's not on vinyl. Yeah. I know you can stream it. So have a stream first, and if you like it. Yeah. Anyhow, yeah. so I, I brought some of this stuff with me and made the trip go on. That's great. I'm just gonna put a comment up here. Maybe one of you technical guys can. Um, Bombay, to how many channels on my PC? Now, I'm, I'm hearing a little bit of feedback. Does someone have YouTube open somewhere? Not me. Anything? No? No. Okay. Maybe I do. Let me check. <laughs> Scott's, Scott's, Scott's left us. So I'm not sure, Bombay, uh, Teddy. Um, I, all I know is that you can uh, comment here, and, we'll, and everybody can read your comments live, and we'll have to ask, ask you questions. Right. Um, I, closed, any... I closed all the apps. I don't think it's me. Okay. That, I just heard a little squeaky stuff. So, J Jim, uh, what have you been up to, bud, over the last week? Uh, well, I don't know, really. Most of the same. I mean, um, oh, well, I mean, going to lots of meetings for the various hospital boards I sit That's on. Still, and, right? still yeah. And, and doing a lot of consulting work, but you know that you know the usual stuff. I mean, it's not terribly interesting. I've got, um, a, I've got a couple of subjects I want to talk about today, and I, I know you'll have a, a really good opinion of it and some information. <clears throat> so we're also going to start a new series today called "Building a First Class Classical Library," but owned music. That means it's got to be on CD or um, uh, or vinyl. Or if you uh, there's a new um, company i think it's well it's been around a while it's called high definition tape transfers we'll talk about that as well and we've also got the vault we have lots of records to show tonight mm. and uh we'll go back to opera and i know andrew is going to be late but he has an hmp presentation which is wonderful and, and like i said angie may be coming so um i want to show just a couple of records that are coming out the ones that i'm going to buy and tell me what you think about them these these are these are these are coming out fairly soon well, there's this one so what do you think about that anybody I, I i that one fascinates me this is the george grand from the original source um the original is it source or series 
the original series. Series. Oh, the original source. It is the original source. Um, what do you think about that? I don't know that. I've always found them to be, you know, pleasant, um, but but not particularly earth shattering in Beethoven. Um, I I always think he goes to the middle of the road interpretation, which it sounds nice, and there's you know a lot of uh, around the the um, around the orchestra sound. Um, it doesn't particularly grip me, but some people obviously will, will like that sort of performance i'm sure i'm gonna buy it and review it for, uh, i mean <clears throat> dr grandfather have been using all my review comments for their promotions <laughs> <laughs> maybe they can send me a bloody record you know yeah. <laughs> what, what what does anybody know how they're choosing the works that they're reissuing is there a Method well, that are well, there is actually, um, and I found out that uh, we're going to we're going to get to that. Um, I'll do it right now since you brought it up. Um, let me just get rid of that first, uh, and I just put this gentleman up. Up, hi, Up. I think you, you're new. If you are, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. It's Beethoven, Anthony. You don't need to ask. Okay, <laughs> yeah. understood. So, uh, one of the comments I did a Deutsche Grammophone. Um, original source uh, video, Hits and Misses, as chosen by Audiophilia. And, um, very, very and good. thank you. And it's, it was fun to do because they're very popular and I've got about 3,000 views on it already, so that's nice. But I also got a lot of comments. And a, a, a nice gentleman, I think his name is Mark, um, he gave me a comment about yay long. <laughs> <laughs> it was very interesting. Um, he's obviously uh, very knowledgeable and has an in because he said he's been talking to Rainier Mayard, uh, the, the, the producer at the Emil Bill in the studios. Um, I, mean, I think that's me repeating, and I'm not, I don't have anything open. Maybe I, let me just close these tabs. I think I'm the, I'm, I think I'm the culprit. Just let me just close all these. You never know. What's uh, I think that, okay, that should that should work anyway. Um, <clears throat> so he said, You know, Anthony, I was talking to um, to to Rainier Mayad, and he said that all that fiddling and twiddling that um, they Carrie Ann does, he said Carrie Ann didn't do, he said Carrie Ann's getting the rough end of the stick. <laughs> and I, 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 I said, Well, I appreciate the, the thoughts, but. I can't believe that. First of all, there's enough photographs of Carrie in at the at the at the knobs twiddling them, and his videos are, as Simon Rabbit said, his videos are a disgrace. You know, they're just so old-fashioned, right? You know, everyone not not anybody moving and the, the, the camera, right? Um, so I, I think he was a, a, a technical fellow, loved it, and I think that um, I think he did feel a lot. So uh, I, I'm not sure, but I think Rainier is maybe trying to sell some more records. But but then I saw today, I think called Stage Plus. It's on Deutsche Grandfrau website. Angie mentioned it. It's a it's a it's a it's like Cobalt, but with videos of Deutsche Grandfrau stuff. And there was um, Anne Sophie Mutter talking about Gunter Hermans, who I've disparaged quite regularly on <laughs> on any way that'll listen. He's the Deutsche Grandfrau. Tonmeister, sound engineer. And she was saying that he's the most um, magical man with incredible ears and gets the heart of the musicians. And I'm thinking, am I hearing the same thing? So I, I don't know. I don't know what to believe. Um, I do know that um, that if you go to, go to the George Grandfront site and have a look at Stage Plus and see some of the videos, I think it's on their, their uh, Instagram as well, I think, or YouTube. And listen to what she says about Gunter Hermans. Maybe there are birds somewhere. Yes, I'll close my window. No, 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 that's fine. I just, I just don't know. <laughs> thinking to myself, I got repeating. I go, no, no, the bird's fine. I had Respighi on this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I don't know. It's time to go to bed. It's late. <laughs> not, not as late as Jim. Okay, so there's that one. Now let me um, let me let me do it. I will be buying this one. Let's present. Yeah, I was just curious if there was any rhyme or reason what they would how they were choosing. Yes, work. well, he he said that. And they said they they choose they have a very specific um, uh, list. They're not not to do too many digitals. It's going to be mainly from the seventies, so you know, so not many tulips. Like I want that Shostakovich ten, the, the the analog, and I want the um, I want the uh, the the um, that great um, Polini, Patricia. Anyway, I'm going to be getting that. That's on Esoteric. They're about a hundred dollars though. They're another one that they don't send out records. And, and this one, tell me what you think about this one. Yeah. Try I'm getting this a little slow. I, I pulled out my Polini Petrushka CD, and even the CD has tulips around it. Yeah, oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. what do you guys think of that one? The David Australia <clears throat> Brahms. I mean, we've got, we've all got, we've all got um, Heifert. Which he ruined it for everybody. It was so brilliant. What do you think of that one, Jim? Well, it's interesting because um, Oistrak recorded various concertos with quite a few of the sort of major conductors of the day, didn't he? Um, I, I think Sal is, is is a great conductor. I mean, we we might talk about his Beethoven later. I think he's a better conductor of, of orchestral music rather than accompanying. Um, I, I, I've always been a great admirer of the Emil Gillels Beethoven slightly did. But when I heard Gillels do it with other conductors, he, I, I think he's even better. I think Sal was, was very sort of straight jacketing in some respects. And um, he didn't expect soloists to do. I mean, I love the, the Clamper recording of, of Oistrock. Um, with the Orchest National de France, is it, or the French radio? Yes, yes. yeah. Um, the acoustic is a bit bathroomy, but but wow, that you know, that they really were two simpatico people. Um, so yeah, I mean, I know people venerate Sal, uh, you know, but yeah, again, it's horses for courses. That's right. <clears throat> uh, Scott, why don't you read Jose Luis's uh, comment? Yeah. I've been very leery of the DG original source releases. Mixing the four tracks to two seems a very touchy process to me. So, several re reviewers have commented on the billowy, phasey sound from the rear channels. Interesting. Pretty accurate comment there, Jose. Um, I, th I think that <clears throat> it was new. It was Deutsche Grammophon, the oldest, the most venerated label mm. and i think if you even had one little bit of criticism people looked on you and kind of shit on you for a great height you know a lot of pr and a lot of stuff going on but wow i don't know where that feedback is i don't know anyway anyway uh so yeah not all of them are be great some of them have been the the um four last songs were surprisingly brilliant but that was a, a pretty good record to begin with. Um, the Beethoven 7, someone said to me that they, they, they don't like it at all. I really think it's amazing. Do you, do you have the Beethoven 7, Scott? Did you, no, you... no, I'm very hesitant about them as well. What, what do you, what do you, what do you know? Well, I've, I've only heard one, um, and I, it was the Rite of Spring. <gasps> That's right, yeah. Well, I, I mean, I liked it, but I wasn't like wowed by it. For the price that they are here, I wanted to be really selective before I chose anything else. It seemed, um, I, I don't know, I guess I just wasn't really into Deutsche Grammophon, except for the early stuff. That, that's, that period, I just am not familiar with, so I have to be really careful about which ones I buy. I liked your, your breakdown of what you thought were the winners. So. Yeah. so I'm going to use that as some guidance. Just, just my opinion, but um, yeah, the considering the the right of spring, 
uh, it was done in Fairfield Halls, but some of my professors, Chairman professors, Larry Stanis, John Stanis, the, the late John Stanis, um, they were, they, they said, yeah, it, it sounded great, I think. Really? Okay. But the, then the record, the original record didn't go anywhere. But right. The, the we got to track down that sound. Yeah, that sound is really bugging me. Can everyone check that they don't have any other apps open? I've got everything. And check, check your microphone settings. Yeah, yeah. I've, ch I've checked mine. I'm going to check I'm mine. <laughs> I'll, ch I'll put the reduce. reduce that happens. Yeah, all my settings are good. Hi, Angie. How are you? And we're just we're just starting out. Good. Something. How are you? Fine. You're where are you? I'm in a hotel room in Chicago, getting ready to hook up and set up my room tomorrow. We can't get in tonight. The earliest is seven thirty in the morning. Oh, so it's a, it's so a I only have eleven skids to uncrate and put the room together in a day. What's uh, what do you what's um, what's in the room? Well, it's uh, the best room in the house. It's on the top floor, 1620. But uh, I'm going to be showing... Um, are you interested to know what I'm going to be showing? Yes, yes. I, it, absolutely. Well, I'm going to be also using John Stratton's turntable with the uh, glands on. Someone said... Uh, I actually got two Canadian, Canadian tables. The other one will be the Oracle Delphi 7. And okay. each one will have the phase mation cartridge, our favorite. Which and one? the other will have uh, the probably the 1000. And the other one will have the analog relax. Both are Japanese cartridges. Um, but what's interesting about the show is huge. It's over 200 listening rooms. Massive. There's going to be an estimated 9,000 plus visitors. Wow. Um, they have lined up, and I know you're going to talk about tapes. But they're going to have a seminar or an event, I guess, on the tape, uh, the once and future medium. And they're going to have speakers like Chad Chasem, um, which we know acoustic sounds, um, and Miles Astor. He's going to be on the panel. And then, of course, Michael Fremer is going to do his own one hour analog. Uh, turntable setup. So there's a lot to do other than just walking around and going room to room, listening to system uh, and system. Um, the other thing, I, uh, thanks for mentioning that Poche Stage Plus. I think it's great. That app is awesome. Uh, I really well, learn a lot from it as well. And, and you get to see the performance, not just hear it. Uh, and also, for Scott, I ordered, I watched your video on the double sleeves and the jackets and all that. So yeah. I got a package waiting for me. I ordered some uh, from your recommendation and I'll be trying them when I get back from doing yeah. the show. Oh, cool. That's Are you going to do your whole collection, Angie? You'll need about 4,000. <laughs> I'm not going to do the whole collection. Um, no. I just need to uh, set up a new... Um, uh, one, two, three, four tier um, album stand in my dining room. <laughs> so while yeah. we're dining, we can look at my records. Uh, of, of course, the featured highlighted ones. So that's that's uh, what's going on here. The I, show I, starts I, uh, on the 12th, so tomorrow's our setup day. I get like 100 and, emails a day from everybody. Like, come to this room, come to this room. It's going to be amazing. It is amazing. And there's a lot of effort that people put into it. And I want, uh, you know, there was a video done about judging rooms and stuff. You know, it's, it's a different flavor that might attract you, might not attract you. But saying you don't like something, how about it's not to my liking? Yeah, did you because see that? Before, a Angie? lot of time and effort is put into doing these shows. Did, did you see uh, that the video you're talking about with the gentleman 
said that he's be, he was told you cannot say anything negative about any room. That is, that is a crock and a half. That's There's an ulterior motive to that one. I've never There's been There's definitely that, an ulterior motive to that. That is not true. I've done, I've done Florida show, Texas. You know I've done a lot of shows. It's almost a show a month. Nobody, I don't know of any one single show organizer that would put that into anybody's mind. That's what so, I thought. This is a made up story as far as I'm concerned. Clickbait. Yeah. I think so because I've yeah. never, I was never told ever. I will tell you one thing just for the crowd here. Just, I don't want to embarrass Angie, but you know, Angie and I have been working together a long time, um, 30 years. She's been sponsoring the magazine for 30 years, right? Me, Jen, and she's giving me a lot of money. <laughs> Jen goes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But in all the years, anytime there's been a problem with equipment, first of all, Angie's never stuck her nose in, not even once. She wouldn't, but I wouldn't allow it, but she would never do that. But what she what she does, if this, no. how can we solve? My joy is exploring. Yeah, go ahead, sir. No, it's the same. You say, how can we solve the problem? And I think there was that one thing, the Rager CD player, 25 years ago, and we you, you brought extra equipment in, regular speakers, just to try and make them work, you know. And this is what it's about, you know, in, in high-end audio. And and if people go to a, a room and they don't like it, it's it's not for them. That's fine. Just Scott and I were going about his speaker search. Angie, Scott is, is, is looking for speakers. <laughs> yeah. And, Scott, just tell her the tell her the make. Of I can fix them up. <clears throat> I can fix them up, but I can't come into your bedroom to sell you speakers. <laughs> you have to oh, come to me, honey. Okay. <laughs> down, 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 Jan, Jan wants first crack at Scott anyway. And Jan, you can have Scott. Crack, um. Anyway, just to put put some humor into our serious <laughs> conversations. But yeah, that that thing was a, a crock for sure. Tell, it was Scott, something. There was an ulterior motive to that one. Yeah, for sure. Tell Angie about the speakers. Thought, what, are they, what are they? What other speakers do you have? Uh, the speakers well, we're that introducing. I, oh, go ahead. Oh, he asked Sorry. me to tell you the speakers that I'm auditioning right now. They're they're alone. They're a youth speaker. Um, they're from a company yeah, called System, System Audio. System Audio. You know about them? Yeah. Yes, yeah, I know them. Oh, okay. This was the Pandion 30. No, not in production mm -hmm. any longer. But I don't know that much. <clears throat> beautiful speaker. Really lovely sound, well, romantic sound. On I, I would say on this on, on the warm side, a little bit on the warm side, but very, very clear and detailed. And I'm just not sure it's the best speaker I've heard in my room, but you know, there's so many other choices at my price range. Use these are about four thousand uh, dollars. Well, that's what they're being asked. So, I'm kind of looking for suggestions in that range, even if it's new or or on uh, accommodation price or whatever. So, keep that in mind if you have any suggestions. Absolutely. Yeah. This is what Angie tell tell Scott how you feel about when you're actually going to buy something. Um, I used to go to Angie's <laughs> just to hang out with my, with my children and Jan. And I said, you know, I really want to get a BMW. Angie. You know, uh, if I could, with speakers, okay. it's an air, it's an. I think you froze there, Ange. Wi Fi tonight. <laughs> the last couple weeks have been very interesting. But well, she'll be back. She'll be back. But Angie, I said, I, you know, I, I want to get a BMW. She said, is that going to make you happy? I said, yeah, I should. well, just buy it. So that's what I think you should do, Scott. If, you, if you're happy with either those or another set, just mm. make a decision and, in, and, and enjoy. No no remorse. Just love the music. Right, right. You know, write down <clears> notes, you know, on, on, listen to classical, piano, voice, and so on. Yes. yes. Okay, well we've, got Angie, well, we've got Angie frozen for a second. Um, I know Jim has some records to show. I know, Jack, do you have some records to show tonight? You've already shown your great CD. 
No, I'm, uh, in fact, I just got the call. I just, I walked in here about 15 minutes before the live stream. Oh, and Linda's got dinner waiting for me. So I'm going okay, to try to okay. get back. I'll try to get back before 930. That's okay. We're, uh, I'm not sure how long we're going tonight. But anyway, it's great. Okay. It's great to see you. It's great to yes. see you. I'm going to put yeah, some and, and, we're and, and, and and if, if you can, I'll, I'll send you a note. I, I'd love a list of the shipway stuff that I should look yeah, for. Yeah, for sure. In fact, maybe I'll put it on the on the um, on the rundown next week, and we can put some photographs. Yeah, it, it, it just blew me away. Anyhow, I love you guys. Yeah, you me too. Guys. All the best. <laughs> we'll talk to you soon, Scott. Get those speakers straight now, so you can get happy down there. Bye, Jack. Yeah, yeah. See you soon, Jim. Keep that haircut. Okay, <laughs> I will. <laughs> okay, so Scott, we're gonna. Um, I'm not sure what time Andrew's coming on, but okay. we've got a little bit of time to show records, so we'll do you first. And I know you have a lot. And then, right. um, and then let me just. Right. We'll get. You. I'm just going to make sure Andrew knows that we've got her on. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> Scott. Okay. Are we holding off on the Beethoven? Here, I'm going to put Scott on, on, on solo for a second. Okay, Scott, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, well, we talked about Beethoven boxes. We're going to do those a little, late, a little later, I think. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so I just, since we've been discussing EMI labels and so forth, um, I collected a lot of the ASD label. So... These are a little later than the ones we've been talking about, but um, this is one of them. Have you guys heard this? Uh, I know I the conductor. Uh, he has a great, voice with a great voice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, there you go. That's better. Wonderful. City of Birmingham. And this is Stuart Eltham uh, Engineering. And I, I love his uh, engineering. He did the, the Le Cid, the Massonet one. Yeah. Um, and this is another one. This was a famous one. It's on the EAS list. I was collecting all of, all of Harry Pearson's recommendations at one time. If that's, what year, what year is that? What year? Yeah. I don't know. It's quad, so it must be Stereo quad, so it must be like late 70s. Yeah, my father wouldn't have been on that recording, but it's got the band of the Royal Multi School of Music, Nama Hall, where my dad went to school. Um, yeah, interesting. Yeah, Jim and I played a lot of that. <laughs> yeah. Jim adores Elgar. I'm not, I, I, I love Elgar, but Jim just, you know, everything, he's got Elgar's signature in the house. But that's yeah. a great. Okay, next. Another Louis Fermeau. Oh, wow. this is a famous one, too. Sure is. Um, Crown Imperial and Orb and Scepter are both incredibly difficult to play. <laughs> oh, my God. This is seven, 77. Neville Bowling uh, did the engineering on that. What were you going to say, Jim? Well, I, I was just going to say, it's interesting when you see these um, recordings. It's got, you know, Worcester Cathedral Choir or something on it. And I mean, I've been to Worcester Cathedral many times. I, I was there a couple of months ago, actually, just after Christmas. And, you know, Elgar conducted Garantius there. He conducted all the symphonies there and everything. The interesting thing is, it's one of the smallest cathedrals in Britain, you know. Um, oh. And it's quite interesting when you get... I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful cathedral. It's really stunning. And, and it's got the tomb of King John, you know, the Magna Carta and all that right at the at the high altar but oh. you know as a as a cathedral it's relatively small and um i was quite taken aback at you know sort of if you get a full elgar orchestra in there and a choir when you're doing garanti <laughs> something right. yeah, i haven't actually I, i'm gonna have to go and see how they do it i mean hereford cathedral because you know the three choirs festival every year it's in a different it's either in Gloucester or Hereford or Worcester. Um, Hereford's a, a bigger, much bigger thing. Um, so, I mean, I really must go and hear one of these pieces actually in Worcester Cathedral. It's, you know. This, but, yeah. Uh, I think, are you thinking this was recorded there? 
Well, I don't know how many it says choristers or Worcester Cathedral. I don't know. It probably would have been recording Birmingham Town Hall, wouldn't it? Town Hall, Birmingham. Yeah, it says on the back. Is that the great? Yeah. Is that the great hall that Birmingham always does? Uh... Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, the other one no. is a, big, a bathroom, and it's very hard to control. It's, oh, I thought it was huge. It is massive. It sounds oh, okay. Like, <laughs> it rooms like a bathroom. Sorry, it's it sounds massive. <laughs> I mean, the thing about Birmingham Town Hall is where actually Mendelssohn conducted Elijah and, and sort of, you know, he, he wrote those oratorios for that that sort of space. Uh, but Symphony Hall is a totally different ball game. It's it's a wonderful hall. Symphony it is. Hall. Yeah, I see. This one, this one is uh, from 78. It is uh, Christopher Parker engineered this one. Oh, mm. oh, lovely. Yeah. Gorgeous. Um, this one. <laughs> oh, I yeah. Just, I just saw a show about the Have a Gold Brian this week. What an interesting man. These are all stereo quad, so they're both. Um, I just got to, I, I didn't really search this out. It just kind of fell in my lap. I don't know too much about it, but kind of interesting oh yeah yeah it's a children's opera yes um, but uh, the sound is wonderful bishop and parker again this one's in a nice matte jacket jim did you did you have any connection with parry at all or was he dead when you went to the royal college he was dead by that time was yeah he, he died in 1918 he oh god Paris. <laughs> <laughs> he was dead nearly 100 years when we were at college. <laughs> it's just so. Um, no, no um, yeah. But that recording of the Bolt of the Parry Fifth Symphony, that was the last recording he made in 1979. Oh, okay. Yeah. And 79. he also, is it coupled with the elegy on the death of Brahms? That, yes. That mm -hmm. is a wonderful piece, isn't it? Yes. It's it's so neglected, and yet it's a fabulous short piece. What's, what's the name of the piece, Jim? Elegy for the on the death of Brahms yeah. by Parry. By Parry, yeah. Oh wow! Elegy for Brahms, and the two the the two pieces originally were on on that last recording, and they're they're fabulous. In case um, some of the viewers don't know, um, the AMI postage stamp was often covered with the angel label when these were imported into the United mm. States. Unfortunately. Right. <laughs> yeah. But that is the way it was. Um, By the way, have... Andrew has arrived, so we will be doing the HMV presentation tonight, so that's good. Okay. This is a Previn recording. I think it's Bishop and Parker as well. Christopher Parker. I have a London version of this too that's pretty famous. L'enfant et le sortiège. I, I won't even try to pronounce that. <laughs> this is um famous one. <laughs> oh yeah. Symphonic yeah. study. Very flimsy jacket. This was redone by Mo Mobile Fidelity on a two record set. Um, this is a nice one too. We see you, Ange. <laughs> we're just, we're just oh, <laughs> the wireless here is really bad. <laughs> that's okay, my love. We're, we're happy that you could even make it. Oh, that's Bishop. a famous recording. Bishop and Parker. This is interesting alternative to the Reiner. Key J. Um, this A, Roma, Symphony in C. Mm. This is um, Stuart Eltham. This was, uh, this was reissued by Clavier, I believe as well uh, scott uh, jose has a question for you yeah uh yes the london is the london recording the answer man yes it is oh uh, what about the sortie yes the sortie, the sortie, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah it yeah. um it's also available on a stereo treasury or richmond treasury uh that's the one i have we got you and, on uh, we're just going to finish up scott's uh yeah just a couple more yeah that's okay Oh my goodness! Mm. I want you all to go watch my Richard Strauss video about yeah that, that goddess. She's wonderful. I love the four last songs. This is 
after I heard the four last songs, I as soon as I saw this one, I picked this one up. Um, this is an odd one. The Choice of Hercules. What's going on over there? <laughs> I don't know. The sound is. Where's that sound coming from? Angie. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. What in doubt blame Angie? Angie, I think it's do you have a subwoofer? Yeah. Do you have a, do you have a subwoofer? <laughs> and Angie, you will love that some guy came on my um, on my comments and said to me, hey, Angie, I'm really glad you told those guys how about subs and put them in their places. <laughs> my uh, pleasure. <laughs> Oh, that's a great record. Is it? A great record. I recently got that one. I haven't spent much time with it. I didn't know because of the Dresden State Opera. I didn't, I mean, Des Desmond, Dresden State Orchestra. I hadn't heard of them. Richard Strauss wrote most of his works for that orchestra. Oh, okay. And two more. This one. Never, never even seen that record. You've got some incredible free no records, man. Yeah, I might have an extra copy of that um, for you. Thank you, bud. When you come out, when you come out and visit, your sweetest. <laughs> that That's is the it. last one. That is a great piece. If anybody doesn't know that piece, Frank Rich, the Sea, it's absolutely spectacular. It's not as good as La Mer, but it's very, very good. That's one of my favorites from this whole thing. Fantastic. Okay, I'm gonna put some. I'm just gonna show a couple of records myself, if you don't mind. Jim, did you have some records to show? Yeah, I've got a few. Yeah. Okay, let's put Jim up first. Okay, Jim, you're on. Okay. Well, the first one, going back to Lyrita from last week, is um, Alan Rawthorne, oh, Symphony yeah. Double One, and it's the London Philharmonic John Pritchard. It, this is actually, I bought this brand new about 40 odd years ago. So it's, I've been played once, but I got it out of my. Vault. Stores oh, today. The, the vault, like the like vault. Out of the vault, yes. <laughs> <Mind> the overflow <laughs> room. <laughs> yeah, the vault. And um, and this is another one which is great. It's uh, Gervais de Pay and Daniel Barenboy doing oh, the Brahms clarinet sonatas. Oh, that's great. Um, what label is that? Oh, that's EMI. EMI. That's EMI. Again, this is an original. From, Sorry. Where did you get that from? Oh, I bought this a long, long time ago. Oh, okay, okay. So it's not not from the not fifteen cents from the. Uh, no, I'll, I'll show okay. I'll show you my biggest thing that I got this week. Well, well, um, yeah, um, which I found not in my usual haunts, but I knew about it, and it is virtually brand new. But it is the original Tom Speech and Haydn symphonies on EMI. I have those. That's the rehearsal. Uh, plus the rehearsal. And the, you the, know that the, unfortunately, a couple of those are uh, rechanneled monos into stereo, sadly. Yeah, but um, it's virtually brand new. I mean, I think whoever owned this must have had it in, you know, it smells a bit musty. So it, it's amazing. probably been in someone's dining room or something. Um, and then we, we we were talking about um, we were talking about Solomon, and I found this the five piano concertos oh, on man. EMI Treasury. Um, again, lovely condition, virtually Incredible. brand new. Incredible. So yeah. I've I've got my Beethoven one if you're interested or if no, you No, we'll do the Beethoven. We'll just hold off on the Beethoven, but all right, so okay. We'll show some records, then we'll do Andrews, and then if we have time, we'll do the Beethoven. Yeah, otherwise, okay. We'll, we'll have to. Otherwise, we'll have to save it. Where are we here? Just one second. We'll have to save it till next week for the for the next show. <laughs> <laughs> if it's like we do the live streams, here we go. Four hours later, we'll still be showing records. Okay, so here we go. Okay, I'm gonna. So I, I decided to pull some today that, not really audiophile, but I, I really love them. Um, these are some mono records. This is a Schwarzkopf. 
with Walter Gisa King in a Mozart mm. recital on a on original Columbia. You see the Columbia label. Wow, that's, that's nice. glorious. Um, I want to show the, the monos first. This is another one. She had the world's best accompanist. So here she, here she is with Edwin Fisher doing a Schubert song recital. Look at her. Mm. She doesn't look like a Nazi, does she? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, that's let's not sugarcoat it. There was a lot of problems there with her and her, her beliefs, unfortunately. But a lot of the people at the end of the war, they were just kind of, you know, hoping to survive, right? So who the hell knows what was going through their mind? But what an artist that woman is. And of course, Fisher, incredible. I I used to teach with Peter Gellhorn, who was oh, her yeah. first. And somebody once, I, 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 <laughs> I was outside the door when he was giving a master class. And somebody brought up the, the Nazi thing and he went ballistic. Oh god. She was not a Nazi. <laughs> well, she wasn't a Nazi, but she just I mean she I, just played, I, I, she's like Karen, she played the game, right? You know. Yeah, absolutely. Very, but you, uh, you know, you know, so they, they they got they're very well, they're all dead now, but they were very touchy about the whole thing. Well, the revisionism is it, re, Revisionism is nice. Yeah. yeah, uh, th yeah. This is another one, uh, absolutely beautiful. Uh, this is with Gerald Moore, who is a wonderful accompanist. Again, another Mono Columbia. They're just, and they're mint. And it's just, just I got these from a, from a, from a lady in, 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 in Victoria. She was a um, uh, part of the diplomatic corps. And I got a whole load of, she passed away, unfortunately. And her son was selling them all. I got them for like two bucks each. This is uh, this is still full price on CD. Uh -huh. This is the Venice Brain. Mozart can show those. He's another one that ruined it for everybody else because nobody can play them like Venice Brain. And Carrie Ann, they said, "Who's the best Mozartian you've ever worked with?" He said, "Very, very easily, Dennis Brain. Just incredible. If you don't know who Dennis Brain was, go to the Wikipedia. Uh, he was coming back. He liked sports cars, and he was coming back late after a gig in the Edinburgh Festival, 1957." And in Croydon, right by the Fairfield Halls, um, he, he ran off the road and hit a tree. He was killed. So no. sad. So sad. That was available on Testament for a little while too. Yes, it's it's been available everywhere because it's it's a very fine mono recording. That's a, that's an original. Uh huh. And, and I wanted to show this one. This is stereo. This is um this is a Meridian, beautiful olive Meridian. Uh, Meridian used two two in stereo. Use two microphones to get a very natural sound. Um, they have a very special kind of PR. And the, the, the 70s Meridians are remarkable. This is by uh, my friend John Bingham, who I think Jim knew very well as well. John Bingham was a mentor of mine at Trinity, uh, a piano professor. And I skipped a lot of my company's lessons because. Um, because uh, he was the most remarkable teacher. And I learned so much about music from his lessons. Um, and he studied with Neuhaus and the Moscow Conservatoire, and he won the Personi, he won the Clara Haskell. And he was the most incredible pianist. But if you can, this is about $10, $15 on Discogs and eBay. I checked today, there's about 10, uh, 10 near mints. Buy it, treat yourself. It is one of the best piano records you'll ever hear. The music is beautiful. You know, a lot of people think of this kind of trashy music, kind of trashy music, but it's Schubert, so it's stunning music, and it's arranged by Liszt, and it's just beautiful. Uh, the O Koenig and uh, the Fiorella, it's just, it's beautiful. So I highly recommend that. That's all I'm going to show tonight. I was going to show some other ones, but I wanted to mainly show that one and the monos. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get Andrew up. Hey, Andrew, <clears throat> how are you? Greetings from Australia. Sorry, I'm late. Hey, I had an appointment and I forgot that, that we went back an hour in daylight savings. So it's gone from 11 a.m. to 10 a.m. for us. So mm. I just first of all like to thank um, uh, the wonderful presentation by Anthony on the um, last four songs, which was a recording that um, my mother collected as a soprano. So and I found someone mentioned in the comments uh, that was an earlier performance by Schwarzkopf. Uh, and I actually found the vinyl for these 
in one recording in 53 and the other one in 55. And it was actually digitally remastered and on vinyl by Angel, which is intriguing. So just sort of that as a sky So you might be able to find that uh, LP. It was a two LP set um, uh, with the that earlier performance by Schwarzkopf. Thank okay, you. so um, HMV. So just for those who didn't see last week, uh, HMV grew out of the gramophone <coughs> company, which was set up by Emil Berliner, uh, who was the inventor of the flat disc, competed with uh, the cylinder discs of Edison. Uh, and it has this famous picture of Nipper, um, which was altered uh, by the artist um, to show a flat disc rather than a cylinder, which was in the original. Mm. Um, that uh, just flipped through that in uh, 1931, uh, Columbia Gramophone, the British uh, one and HMV combined to form EMI. Um, so HMV, uh, the most famous series of ones that Scott has already shown some of the ASD series, the original ones of these had three digits. And the first one was 251, Shaharazad conducted by Beecham. And this was issued in stereo in 58. And the last one is um, 655, which is Jacqueline Dupre, um, conducted by Barbara in 65. So the very first ones are the white background with the gold, sorry, gold. The next one is the what Anthony calls the semi-lune, um, or I've written here, semi-circle. This started from 576 through to 655. So it was only a fairly, relatively short period of time uh, and shows prominently Nipper uh, listening to his master's voice, hence the name. Um, this is also the original label from when they went to four digit record numbers. Uh, and these started with uh, ASD 2251, uh, Schubert Symphony conducted by Bea Baroli in 66. Um, just to confuse you, and I won't spend too long on this, uh, HMV also pressed uh, Melodia Russian recordings. Um, they otherwise look somewhat similar. So there's quite a lot of ASD numbers below 2478, which are actually Melodia, um, but they were mm. pressed in the UK. And um, some of them, uh, which I have, are actually very good. Some of them, um, I think the original recording wasn't so great, but the vinyl is good. Um, so the next one is the so-called postage stamp, the early postage stamp, which was coloured and has the white background. Um, and there's sort of three versions of this. Is that this one, then there's the sort of monochrome one, and then there's what's so-called late postage stamp. Um, the last one uh, I know of is ASD2812, which was bulk conducting Wagner back in 72. Uh, the next is the monochrome uh, nipper dog. Um, and the last one of these is ASD3825. And then there's a so-called late colored dog um, that came next. And once again, slightly dark compared with the previous colored one. And then finally, there's the so-called large dog. Um, <laughs> And these are often German pressings. Now, you might remember from the Columbia presentation, there was a sort of a sister series of labels with Columbia, which was predominantly um, non-classical. And it's the same with these CSD numbers. The vast majority of them are non-classical, but there were some notable classical ones with conductors such as Davis, Goosens, Vicaris Sargent, Silvestri, and others. Um, the original label is very similar to the ASD label, but it has a green background rather than the white background. Um, the CSD number starts with uh, 1251. Um, the first classical one is 1252, which is ballet music conducted by Irving, issued in 58. The last green and gold, uh, Nova's 1503, which was British light music conducted by Veldon in 63. This was followed by the much more common red and black label, which uh, was first issued in 63 and finished in 69. I've never seen that one ever. <laughs> I've never seen it either. No. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, I've got quite a few, I've got quite a few of these. Um, so maybe they're more common in Australia. So one of the funny <laughs> things that, uh, one of the funny things is that uh, you know the World Record Club um, got a lot of its pressings pressed uh, by EMI, and in fact EMI actually bought it out in '66. So maybe that I don't know. Every, every second record in Australia seems to be a World Record Club record. Um, the last of these is this sort of monochrome green label with the monochrome dog in it. Uh, there are also, there are also um, uh, box sets which had these SLS numbers and there were uh, several series of these. Um, the first ones uh, were three digit, the second ones were 5000 series and the last ones as shown here actually had seven uh, digits. Um, now, just a, a little bit of controversy, uh, the famous or infamous Angel label. I'm <laughs> here only talking about British pressed ones. So they did, uh, HMV did press a number of opera and vocal uh, recordings on the Angel uh, records. Um, this is the original <laughs> label. Uh, it started with um, SAN 101 slash um, 2. Then there's a later version and the angel has gone from uh, white to black. Um, uh, and finally, they see, and this is almost exactly the same sort of sequences with the Columbia, the, the monos. The only thing I should uh, raise is that uh, Walter Legg, uh, the main producer of HMV, was very dubious about stereo. He didn't think it sounded very good. Um, and he persisted with producing mono records long after, uh, long after uh, many other labels had, had packed it in. Um, so you can see that sort of um, down here, so the mono issue ASD 511, as well as being in stereo, was still being produced in mono back in 63. Uh, so the early ones had this lovely gold label, it doesn't show particularly well on this um, uh, uh, photograph, I apologise for that. Um, and many of them had uh, non-breakable written uh, on them. Um, the next was very similar to semi-loon or semi-circular pressing, virtually the same as the stereo, except for um, uh, it doesn't have stereo written on it. Uh, the other series was this uh, mid-price series, uh, which is called HQS. Um, this started in '66, um, uh, and uh, most of these were chamber music um, and or piano music, uh, but they were sold at a cheaper price than the full price HMV. Uh, the second was this plum labeled one, which here looks a bit redder. It's more of a plum color. Um, and then the third was the monochrome dog, um, similar to the ASD sequence. Sorry, I've gone big for some reason or that. Now, the other one, which was actually news to me uh, in my research, is that these HMV concert classics actually were uh, produced to the sort of, sort of same uh, standard as other HMV records, such yeah. as the ASD. It's a show tonight. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, so, good segue. Um, so, uh, two. One of the famous examples is a Campoli Beethoven Violin Concerto. Um, some of them were actually US Westminster recordings that were repressed in the UK, and others were French uh, recordings, such as Gluten's uh, conducting Beethoven symphonies. Um, mm. the, the sound quality of these is basically the same as ASD and the SAX Columbia's. Um, there were also um, uh, a, a series, several series. So there was a two two, sorry, 20,000 series and the 30,000 series. Um, the 20,000 started in 1960 and the 30,000 started in 62. Uh, and it then went to this sort of, once again, a sort of monochrome uh, label. And that's all I've got. Amazing, Andrew, thank you so much, my God. Yes. Your wow. world of information. Thank you so much. My goodness. Um, I didn't go through all the details, but I thought that uh, 
people can, can if they're interested, they can scroll back and read all what, what's written down. Otherwise, I know that you're a bit pressed for time. So. Well, that's okay, no problem. But we'll expect the, the full EMI treatment next week, okay? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fine. I was, ex I was going to, um, I was actually I was just going to show that um, Elizabeth Schwarzkopf record. Just give me a sec. Um, so this is it here. Uh, and it says, uh, um, I don't know if you can see that very well. Just give me one second. Let's move some stuff out of the way. There it is. There. Oh, there you go. Oh, oh, oh! Look at that. Hmm. But what's even more interesting, this is sort of from my mother's record collection, is there's this digital reissue of it on on Angel. Look at the solo oh. horns. Yeah. So I just thought that was that. I thought that was. Um, that was interesting, and uh, just I've been on a bit of a mono kick the last couple of weeks, and uh, I was in my favourite record store, and I just saw these, and I just picked them up, uh, which is uh, Symphony Fantastique by Antol Dorati in the Minneapolis um, oh, on Mercury yes. in mm -hmm. mono, and also um, Scott will know this one is uh, Petrushka with Anthony. Right. right. Wow. The other interesting thing is Ray had asked about um, some time ago about uh, the story behind World Record Club. And um, so, as I mentioned earlier, um, it, and I had noticed this myself because um, there's so many classical records in Australia that are got World Record Club on them, that if they had, it's from HMV or EMI or Columbia, they were fantastic sounding. So it turns out now that they were actually EMI pressings um, with this sort of World Record Club. And as I say, EMI took over World Record Club in 66. The other thing I found out from a friend of mine who's a, a record, I mean, vinyl record producer back in the 70s is that the Deckers in Australia, which have the orange label rather than the, the traditional Decker label, all used the metal from Decker, and the only thing that was changed was the labels, and even the um, the sleeves were actually made in the UK because we couldn't make sleeves in Australia at that time. So I thought that's just interesting for my Antipodean friends. <laughs> Why not? Cool. Thank you so much, Andrew. Just before we get to our building a library uh, session in the last few minutes, I want to just talk about Mark. First of all, hi, Mark Christensen. Jumping on for the first time. Hey, Mike, how are you? Welcome. Uh, great question here. He said, I picked up some Stockhausen today. Thoughts? Not a big deal if you don't want to tackle. <laughs> There's no problem. It'll take some absorption, but very intriguing to me. So, uh, yeah, I, to be honest with you, Mike, I mean, I've never played any Stockhausen. I know that uh, when I was in London, uh, young Mr. Rattle, I did Gruppen, which is for three orchestras, mm. and he was conducting, Claudio conducted, and I think Jimmy Judd, uh, Jim, one of them, one of the orchestras, and that was a big, and then they redid it, just at the Tate Modern about uh, about two years ago, mm. um, and so, yeah, he said, Enfant Terrible, and uh, I'd be interested, Mike, have a listen this week, and uh, maybe come up and show the records, don't be sure, and guys, some of you guys just sit around and, and lurk, and that's fine, but, you know, Angie was brave, came up, got Jim up and everyone, you know, uh, 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 Jack's been coming up. And so please come up and um, and show your records. Okay. Yeah, so Mark, yeah, please uh, come up next week or at least tell us what you think about the Stockhausen because uh, I think some people want to talk about opera, which we started to, but Stefan's not here. So we'll wait till Stefan gets back. And I think some people want to talk about some modern music as well, which is fine. Um, Jimmy Galway calls it squeaky gate music. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but there's some wonderful stuff. There's some. Um, uh, the, you've heard the um, the helicopter quartet. Stockhausen mm -hmm. wrote, wrote a quartet. Each each member of the quartet is in a different helicopter, <laughs> and they're they're sort of flying around playing this piece. <laughs> I don't I don't know how often it's done, but um, <laughs> uh, it sounds a very interesting piece. <laughs> I was confusing. Um, uh, uh, who's that German composer? Oh, he's uh, three letter, three names. Um, 
he wrote uh, Cimarron, he wrote Tristan, I uh, forget it, uh, Hans Werner Henze. Oh, yeah. He wrote a piece called Tristan, which is very modern, very much like Stockhausen. But in the middle, it has a Brahms one quote. It's just amazing music. So, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that next week, Mark. Okay, so finally today, um, I want to talk about uh, just a new series, Building a First Class Classical Library, but only with owned music, vinyl or CD. Now, we'll next week, we'll talk about the high-definition tape transfers. So if you're buying, high, you know, they cost like $30 a file. Um, so that, that's, that's fine, too. But I think it's streaming, just streaming of Cobars or Apple Music. We won't call that. So you got to kind of own it in your in your hand, and I will, I will start with the um, Beethoven symphonies. I just want to start with um, a CD box and just present it because Jim, I think, was on one of these. Let me have a look if I got it here. No, let me just get it. Okay, Jim, you'll you'll know this. So have a look at that, Jim. What does that say to you? Well, I I was um I was involved in in the nine, which he recorded after he'd done this at the Alba Hall, I think. Um he was quite elderly at the time, I seem to remember, but we're talking 40 years ago now. So um but I remember <laughs> that was the bit where he he's I whether he fell asleep or he just got a bit disorientated in the in the slow movement and uh, Barry Griffiths, who was the leader of the RPO, took over and just, you know, sort of indicating, you know, just keep following me. And uh, I mean, the Durati was about 88 or something at the time, so it could be uh, understandable. Um, but uh, he was a great conductor and, and I, you know, I, I love his stuff. I think he's... He is really getting his Indian summer. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna put up, but Jim and I are going to put up and, and Scott some records, uh, the records at the Beethoven box that we choose. And this is the one I would choose. There we go. Uh, EMI, no no um, HMV, you see there, uh, no coincidence. This is the Klempera Beethoven Nine Symphonies of the Philharmonia, the stereo version. He also recorded in mono, which is also fantastic. But the stereo is really wonderful. It's not one week, not one week, um, mm. uh, performance in it and some of them the third the seventh uh, uh, are just very famous performances so if you can find that probably about 100 bucks on discogs uh it's emi sound all postage stamps wonderful that was my records and for my cds i'm going to choose something that's if i can find it here it's just i need to present here we go just give me a second got it here somewhere there it is Okay, let's just go to present, share screen, window. So does that surprise anybody? Come on, James. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it doesn't. I, I remember when we both bought that for about $12 <laughs> and uh, is it Sam, the record Sam, man. Sam, Sam, Sam the Record Man. In Toronto on, on Boxing Day, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Best, best deal ever. I, I think actually it was nineteen dollars, nineteen ninety nine, for yeah. the old symphonies, the sixty three, which is I think is his best version. Yeah, so a, different, a different set. Um, but that would be my compact disc choice. The, the pastoral is a little weak, uh, but the rest, you know, there's a lot of stuff spoken about the recordings. But the sixty three, they're better than the they're better than the later ones. But there, there, there would be my choices. Okay, Jim, uh, what about yours? Um, okay, shall I start with this, my CD choice? Yeah, this is really my, good. My CD choice is Steinberg with Pittsburgh, the DG stereo that he recorded in the 60s. There's some really fine performances on here. Um, and I think Steinberg is very underrated still, um, although he's he's getting more on, on like Durati, he's getting more of an attention there. But my LP set is is weird because it's this. It's the Klutens Berlin Philharmonic uh, EMI, the, the stereo recordings that he made between I think fifty eight and sixty one. Classics for pleasure, um, right? And they were they were they were always in the, that. I've got them on CD now. I bought them in New York about two years ago for like ten dollars. 
this is the classics of pleasure LP pressings, which obviously is probably the same as as the other. And the sound of the Berlin Philharmonic is is quite extraordinary. It's it's a beautiful sounding set in many respects. Um, there's only one drawback, and that is that on the f he he doesn't like doing exposition repeats. <laughs> so if you like your exposition repeats in Beethoven Five and Beethoven uh, Three, I think you uh, you'll be a bit annoyed but um i think it must have been something to do in those days with fitting it all on an lp side or something um but they're, they're beautiful recordings they also give you um, an idea of what the berlin philharmonic would have sounded like under footwengler had he had stereo microphones set up and a decent recording venue um the orchestra sounds very rich and very you know so there's a deep sense of power in the orchestra and and Clutens's performances are they're very clean they're very uh exciting i mean i i, I really like him and his fourth symphony i think is one of the best ones I, i've ever heard um and he gets absolute full control and, and command from the berlin philharmonic they, they give him everything he wants and mm. um some of the some of the recorded sound is sounding a little dated by today's standards but the the sound of the orchestra, I think, makes up for a lot of of those things. It, it, it's worth getting on CD. You can pick it up for like ten, fifteen dollars. I mean, I picked it up in the Juilliard shop, I think, when it just came out. Um, and it's also on the big Clutens, um Erato box set of sixty five CDs, and they also have the mono um, recordings as well, so you get both sets. But I, I still think they're they're remarkable for for an, an LP uh, collection. I think that obviously they're not quite Klemperer, but um, I, I they're different again, and, and I like the I it's like Clutens's you know take on them. Great. Okay, Scott, show us yours. Um, I've collected two over the years. Not a lot of Beethoven box sets, but um, we we show we talked about this one um, a later. A later set. I'm not sure of the year, but is it 77 or 82 or something? I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm never sure. been that. Never been that crazy about this, but I think uh, I have heard some of the single discs from the earlier set, and I think they're better. The ones that you uh, have. The 63 is pretty famous. Yeah, and um, I've talked about Reader's Digest on this on the. Uh, Oh, look at oh, that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a great one. <laughs> I like this one better. It may be not quite as polished, but there's something about it that I just like. The engineering, I, I think, is really good. I believe it's Kenneth Wilkinson. Yeah, yeah. that's a, that's a famous that's a yeah. famous record. Yeah. The Chesky CDs of this sound really good, too, if you want to get it on CD. Oh, they have a Chesky box of that? Uh, no, I think they're individual, but well worth seeking out. All those Chesky CDs are. So <clears throat> thank you, guys. If anybody has any other ideas or in the peanut gallery, we've got to call it Royal Circle, I think, in the Royal Circle. <laughs> I think Ray, Ray wanted it to be called the Royal Circle. Somebody said the Macadamia. <laughs> anyway, um, next week we'll talk about the high-definition tape transfers, a new kind of thing. Um, but I'm going to do a, a new piece every week. Or oh, if somebody has a, 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 a preference, we'll do that. And um, it's building a library so people can go back and go, oh yeah, what did they say for like like Jack did with with Charles and the um, and the Mahler Five? Like what's a what's a great box set? So you've got mm -hmm. the, the Leibowitz, which is one that we all know is wonderful. Three th three thumbs up for that. The Clytons, three thumbs up for that. And the the um, the Klemper is great. And if you don't have a lot of money, buy the mono box. Of the clamper it's great it's it's just a slightly little constricted sound compared to the stereo um so that's it i think for today guys um uh we got through quite a bit of the rundown the lost recording scott you still haven't received those yet eh? not yet no i'll let you know as soon as i do I can't yes wait. i am like so anxious to get my hands on that i'm ready i'm ready for that oh you know one, one interesting thing um Remember we were discussing the Bruckner last week, I think it was, 
uh, the one that's um, on Testament as well. Oh, Brooklyn Four, yeah. Oh, Brooklyn Eight and Nine. Yeah. Um, I, I had told someone that it was available because I had it in my cart. And after the broadcast, like the next day, I went to get it and it was gone. Yeah. It's so we must, we must have some influence. <laughs> God knows. God, and people, people like recommendations. I mean, you know, it's like yeah. you, you go to a stereo, you go to Angie's store, American Sound of Canada, and you just say, she says, uh, what do you like to listen to? What's your budget? Tell me about your room. And then she'll set a system up for you. And she'll, you'll get the perfect system. And you'll never have, you'll never have to go, oh, I buy his remorse. And, um, I just want to do a couple of letters here. Okay, so tech writer, the Bruno Walterbach set with the black and gold velvety cover on 6 eye is that a nice set? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Alan says, another pleasant and informative show. Thanks, everyone. Wishing Angie a successful setup in Chicago. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. We, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, we love you, Ange. Thank you. Um, Mario de la Huega. Hey, Mario. I recently bought a, 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 a Bone VPO DGLP for about 15 bucks here. Quite good. Uh, Joey says, great show. Awesome. Can't wait until next week. You know, we finished Scott and I. We hang on and we, chat, we do a debrief briefly. And then it was like, oh, we can't wait for next week. It's so much fun. <laughs> Is that weird? I don't know. I like talking. <laughs> you know, I went through, I was going through catching up on a few streams that. And they're great, but it's all Beatles, and you know, you know, we need to talk about classical music. Mm -hmm. I, I remember uh, Ken McCallum came and said, "This is needed. It really is. It really is." Oh, um, go ahead. That just a, a stop press bit of news I heard today. Um, Warners are going to be reissuing. Well, they're going to be issuing a complete Adrian Bolt box. Of totally re uh, done recordings, or all, all his EMI recordings, basically, just um, like the, uh, like the Clamper box. Remastered. Yeah, like the Clamper box. It'll you know instead of having the three. I mean, we all bought the three individual boxes, didn't we, when they came out? But um, they're promising that this is going to be the absolute act. Give <laughs> me the dog bollock, as they say. Yes. <laughs> and so, then, uh, yeah. Jose said, good show, good time. Thank you. We'll be here next week. It will be great to have thank you. Thank you, Jose. Yeah. Thank so you. thank you so, so much, everybody. Angie, have a wonderful show. And mm. I know you're exhausted, but and I know that um, I don't like asking you, but we'd love you to come on and tell us about Expona, what you liked about it. We know your room's going to be, every time Angie has a room, it's put together beautifully. So we know, that's, we know that's going to be wonderful. But yeah. uh, I'm just going to take pictures. Yes, and we'd like, and I can put them up here. It'd be, it'd be great. Yep. Yep. Have a wonderful time and safe travels. Um, All right. Uh, I, the gentleman, RCA, I forget his name. I'm not sure. Uh, thank you all. You're welcome. Uh, so thank you all for, uh, in the peanut gallery, and thank you to my friend, my dear friends, uh, who I just love having. I just love talking about classical music with Scott and Jim and Angie. It's just, it's just the best. And for those people watching out in, um, in live stream land, Thank you so much for joining us. Give it a thumbs up if you don't mind. And uh, subscribe to the channel. Scott, if, if you're not, uh, you, of course you're subscribed to Charts, the Pressing Matters. He's got a, uh, an Ella Fitzgerald, especially for my wife for tomorrow morning. It's, gonna, it's, it's, it's going at what time? 7 a.m. or 8, 8 a.m.? Uh, uh, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Eastern? Yeah. And for so clap, between clap hands, here comes Charlie. Oh, fantastic. Mm. Yeah. So between Scott's and mine, you'll get, you'll get your vinyl fixed. And Jim, thanks again. Your hair looks amazing. <laughs> yeah. I do my best. We're all jealous of your hair. Well, you know what it is? It's ever since he's been with the lovely Clara. When's Clara coming on? I tried to get Jan on tonight to talk about four-hour songs. And Jesse well, I, Norman. I told her. She said she'll come on and talk about Hungary and stuff, if you want. Yeah, you want that. We want more women. I know when Angie came on. There were three, four guys like, oh, my God, a woman, an audiophile. Great. She <laughs> <laughs> As I always say about Angie, she's a woman. She's an audiophile. It's over. Don't even go there. <laughs> <laughs> she's already won. Yes, Angie. Angie, I just bought a subwoofer. Okay, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much, guys. Have a wonderful – my guys stay on for a second? Yeah. Have a wonderful week. Okay. And uh, – and then we'll see you next week. Thank you so much. Stay safe.
All the very best to you. Au revoir. Bye-bye. Au revoir. 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 Au